Good afternoon. I'm going to recap Oklahoma today. We'll get into Baylor when, when we meet again on Monday. Uh, we weren't good enough in any phase on Saturday. Uh, credit Oklahoma. I think they're one of the best teams in the country. They're ranked in the top five for a reason. Uh, we got an up-close look at what it's going to take to get to the top of this conference. And uh, kind of recap that game, talk special teams first, the, the negatives, block punt. You know, we talked about that when we, when we actually blocked one against North Carolina State. Low probability of winning if you get a punt block, and uh, we did that, poor communication. Um, and our protection was poor really all day. Um, we'll, we'll make some changes there, we'll get better. Um, I thought we did a poor job in the kickoff return game. We blocked them well, we just, our returners were not very good. Um, and, and we gave up a bunch of hidden yardage by not catching punts. That's something that doesn't, doesn't show up in the stat sheet. But we lost 20 plus yards of field position by not catching punts. We got to do a better job on that. Uh, the positive is like Staley, uh, three touchbacks, um, and our kickoff coverage unit has done a good job. I think we're nationally ranked in that. Um, our punt coverage team, uh, led by George Campbell, I thought I thought they were elite holding CD Lamb to really one return. And then we blocked well, like I said, on kickoff return. We just our returners didn't do a good enough job taking advantage of those blocks. Uh, defensively, negatives, we had zero takeaways, too many explosive plays, 5.2 yards per rush. I thought the positives were we were good on third down. Uh, and, and Oklahoma had been one of the better teams in the country. I think we held them to two of seven on third down. Uh, we for, forced more punts than they, than, than they, had, they had done. Um, and we held them below several of their averages. You know, and uh, offensively, negatives, we just we didn't make enough competitive plays, 50-50 balls, one-on-ones uh, -on in space. And the positives, we were better on third and fourth down. We didn't have any turnovers. And I thought our pass protection was solid, you know. Uh, but injury update, Josh Chandler will be out for about a month. I'm not ready to say how many games that's going to be. He will be out for the Baylor game for sure. Uh, I think it will be close to a month. We'll see how many games that's going to be. A lot of it will depend on how he does from a rehab standpoint. I do anticipate Keith Washington being back in this game. Uh, Diamante Lindsey uh, is going to start working this week and be back. Uh, we are, we're hopeful that he'll be back. Um, and then Quandarius Qualls is the other one that got hurt during the game. Uh, we'll see how he progresses this week. I, I would say he'd be questionable at this point. Um, we sit here on the second bye week, kind of a mini bye week. I don't, I don't guess it's a full week. We'll treat, we'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week, give them off Friday. Start a normal game week on Saturday. So with the with the midweek game next Thursday, Saturday will be technically a Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, and so on. Um, but it's a great opportunity for us to hit the reset button, uh, kind of regroup. We've got a five game season left, and, and the key and, and our main focus. And I talk to our staff, and I'll talk to our players when we see them this afternoon. Is it's really it's about making marked improvement. Um, as we go as we go through the rest of this. And that's something I thought we had done really uh, since the Missouri game uh, up until the second half. You know, second half was not good, especially the third quarter uh, was nothing that we want to be about in this program. Um, but I think we had a really good mindset yesterday. Um, I think our, our seniors have a good good mindset about finishing in the right way. We've got a great number of young people that have got a lot of hope and a lot of energy. And so, looking forward to getting back on the practice field today. So, with that, open up the questions. You know, you shuffled some defensive guys around for the Oklahoma game. Now, one of those is hurt. Maybe you get one back. Balls is questionable. So, uh, do you reshuffle? Uh, how, do, how do you handle that now going into the next game? Yeah, well, we're running out of bodies. Now, the good thing is, uh, if Keith comes back as we anticipate, we get Keith and Bailey to come back. They'll start at corner. Nick Troy. Um, He's shown some good things in the two games that he started, so he'll continue to play. Um, at safety, we'll be able to play Norwood there and, and continue our rotation, which basically Norwood, um, Sean Mahone, K.J. Martin, and then Guzman's played a little bit the last two weeks as well. I thought he played well in the game on Saturday. And then at linebacker and bandit, really we've got to make some decisions over the next next 24 to 48 hours. We haven't done that yet, um, but we're going to have to – we got to make some of those decisions. you know. Shane Campbell, Tonkery, you know, Zach Sandwich is somebody that haven't played a lot for us this year that's probably going to have to get ready. And then we'll probably look, uh, this is probably going to be a game where Jared Bartlett, you know, can be a factor in it. Halfway through, mm -hmm. pretty much, you know, what, what have you 
like that you've seen, and, and what are some, I guess, your biggest concerns in year one? Yeah, um, I think look, I'll, I'll start negatives and I'll hit the positives. I think um, we haven't uh, been consistent in really any uh, phase for an entire game yet. Um, some of that could be due to youth, uh, some of that could be due to opponents, whatever. Um, but our consistency, consistency hasn't been what you would want it to be as a coach. Um, you know, you know, as far as our red zone defense, not been very good. Uh, we haven't got as many takeaways defensively as, as we traditionally would. Uh, offensively, you know, our, our inability to run the football, our lack of explosive plays have, have been our Achilles heel. Um, Positives-wise is I think that um, – some of the foundational pieces that I think are critical uh, to build championship level programs. I think we're establishing them. I think we're playing at a, at a high effort. You know, we're not always not playing well, but our, our effort is, has been at a high level. I think we're physical um, at certain positions, not across the board where we want to be, but we're, we're definitely physical. And, and, and so I think we're establishing those. I think we have high buy-in uh, from the kids in our program. Uh, Outside, uh, we did not play very well special teams last uh, in the game on Saturday versus Oklahoma. That's the first time we've really lost the special teams battle, and we lost it uh, considerably. It, it wasn't close on Saturday. Up till that point, I think that's been a position of strength for us. Um, and I think that you see um, in the young people that are playing, first and second year players, you see significant improvement from the first opportunity they've had. Until even even some of those, even though the game didn't go anywhere like we wanted to on Saturday, thought we those guys um, had some positive moments. Because you've talked a couple times about kind of the board's defense offensively. Um, I don't know how dramatic that is. Is it like a full scale new piece of paper and draw something new up? And does that have any impact on maybe not being as advanced or, or developed as you sound like you are in certain areas? Yeah, you know, I, I, what I should, should have said probably, Mike, is we're trying to reinvent the run game. Right? You know, um, I, I'm pleased, and I should have had this, Alex, with your question. Our pass protection is, uh, since the Missouri game, has been really sound. Um, our quarterbacks have not taken very many hits since that game. Um, so when, we, when I talk about it, it's really in the run game. It's just trying to find the right mix. You know, we, we've struggled. Y'all have written about it. Y'all have asked about it. Um, I haven't denied it. It's obvious. I mean, you look at any statistic and, and tell that. So that's where we really try to recreate ourselves, Mike. The the concepts from pass game, the uh, protections, the play actions, those have always you, you we're running the same stuff. We're mixing up the motions. We're mixing up the uh, the presentation from a formation outlook. Where we're trying to piece things together in the run game, you know, and um, and it's the it's a thing that you go back to as coaches. You're always, do you, you know, what's enough game planning to give yourself an opportunity? All right. But what's too much where your kids don't have confidence in what they're doing? You know, so you're always kind of taking that line. You'll hear coaches talk about it a lot in preseason camp, you know, is what's too much contact and what's not enough contact. It's kind of the same kind of dilemma. Seven games in um, with recruiting, have you had to alter anything that maybe you thought? Was I think happen? we're going to have to go. Um, we're going to have to add a, a couple more DBs to the class than maybe we originally thought, just some, through some attrition. Um, so I think that's the only thing. You know, the from a positional standpoint, is we need to add um, and probably an older, at least one older d defensive back, and maybe two. Even. That's my ask. Junior college players look more. You know, we're not going to wholesale. I think that we'll always we got some really good relationships, uh, junior college wise, and a lot of these kids were on from a junior college standpoint. We got um, relationships that go back to when those kids were in high school, which is beneficial. And you'll see that a lot when we sign junior college kids. There's going to be where you have prior previous relationships with them, um, but we're not going to wholesale and just start signing a bunch. We're going to we're going to build this through high school development and then and then add the right type of kid through the graduate transfer process or through junior college. Uh, one of those guys, Drayshawn Miller, is he making any progress as far as? Yeah, he, he's got, I'll be able to, I'll update you more on him on Monday. He's got an appointment, I think it's actually this morning. 
and so we'll, we'll have we'll have more information on him. He is he's doing better. He his he has started to move more, and uh, I'm optimistic that we'll see him at some point this year. Did you uh, discuss what you're going to do? Well, what, what you have in mind, quarterback wise, who the referees is? Yeah, um, Austin Kendall's a starter. I thought. Um, Talk about his play on Saturday. I thought he played well the first half. I thought second half he did not perform as well as he needs to, and um, he understands that. I thought the first half he held. He really handled all the the noise around that game pretty well. You know, a unique situation. He's got to go back and play his home team in their stadium, and I thought he he threw the ball really well. We had three, maybe four drop passes in the first half, but I thought he made good decisions. Second half, I didn't think his decision making was as good. Uh, he, he missed on several deep throws that we needed to hit to be competitive in that game. Um, but he's our starter, and, and that's how we'll, we'll move forward. The formation you used with Trey Lowe in the first quarter, mm -hmm. do you plan on using either that one or more like specialty formations? Going well, we got to get, well, we've kind of used about every formation that in the books. I mean, we've, we've, been, we've given defenses a lot to prepare for. Um, it's a, uh, are we going to use Trey Low? We got to be more productive when we're in those sets. You know, we had a couple clear runs. We didn't get as many yards as we like to in those sets. Um, I think Trey's getting better. You know, it was good to get him in the game. Um, you know, we had hoped to probably use him a little bit more. Um, I thought he had a couple. He had one really nice run late in the game, and he was able to get a completion. So I think that'll help him from a confidence standpoint. It's going to be week to week how much how much he's involved. Neil, um, did Jared travel with you? Yeah, he's traveling. Just curious. It's unusual yeah. for a guy who's not playing. Has yeah, been well, I thought it was. So, first of all, we don't have as many guys that are healthy to travel. And so, I thought it was important for him um, to go and be in that venue and, and get a feel for um, um, Big 12 atmosphere at a high level. And Because we do. We have aspirations that, that he can be a, a really good player for us. And he's going to have to perform you know, in those venues if he wants to be a high-level quarterback. Um, I thought he might bring some good luck to his brother. We won last time his brother was starting quarterback there, so how about that? Have you thought about playing him a game or two down the stretch and, and others that are you plan on redshirting yeah, so, playing them as well? Yeah, those things are all on the table this week, and uh, whether we'll play him or not to be determined. Um, but we are going to we will take advantage of the rule. And it won't necessarily just be the last four games of the season. Especially at some of those areas where we have some injuries. Talk about Jared Bartlett earlier. Um, we will play some of these guys that have four games that we want a red shirt. We'll, we'll take advantage of that rule. Sure. The guys that are ready. We're not just going to play them to play them, but the guys that are that are physically, mentally ready to play. Any update on Sean Ryan? So uh, he's improving. He's going to start running this week. Um, he won't play against Baylor, um, and then after that, we'll be able to update him. But I but I am hopeful and I'm optimistic that he will return for us this year. You know, what about the, the, the job that uh, Ryan Nealon's done just in general since you've been here, and how has he helped the offensive staff? Yeah, general? Ryan, Ryan um, he's, done a, he's done a great job. He's got good experience. Obviously, he cares about this place a great deal. Um, he's developing as a football coach. Uh, schematically, he's done a nice job. Um, he has some really good – he does a good job getting us ready for the – he stays a week ahead. Um, so he does a good job getting us ready for that opponent, for our next opponent. Uh, as far as previewing those guys, uh, he had some good thoughts on third down. You know, um, I think one of his ideas uh, was something that that, that he had. And I was, we sprung for a touchdown, so he is. He's making making positive impact here. Yeah. The last three third quarters, how much has been just bad luck? I mean, when you look back at everything that's happened, uh, you know, I, I think you kind of make your own luck, honestly. Um, if you go back, and we can just kind of talk talk through them if you want. If you go back and watch the Texas game, you know I thought that's a game they were in it that we were that we were really capable of winning. And um, the we had a couple third downs we didn't make. Um, we had a 50-50 ball that we didn't make offensively, um, and then we didn't take advantage of the turnover. You know, and um, so I don't think it was bad luck. I just think we didn't. Making a play, but defensively we play extremely well in that third quarter. Come back Iowa State defensively until the the first drive of the third quarter didn't play very well. Then we strong two or three stops in a row together. All right, 
offensively, we were just hamstrung. They were they were better than us that day, um, and that's kind of where we're at. Come out here in the third quarter, and I thought this was the in the third quarter we were able to regroup. So it's not something that I'm necessarily concerned about. But I thought the third quarter Oklahoma overwhelmed us early, and so they went down and scored really quickly, made it 35 to 14. Then Ali makes the big catch. It gets called back, and then we miss on two deep balls. You know, Sam had an opportunity. I was trying to get him back going early because he had a, he had a hard time in the first half, and so we we're in a double move. He's he's open. Um, we miss it. Then the play after Ali, we throw another shot down the field, and we overthrow him on that one. And that was those were two opportunities where we won, where he won. We protected. We just didn't connect on the throw. That was an opportunity to make 35-21. And I believe if we connect on those, I'm not saying we're going to win the game, but it doesn't get away from us right there. Okay? And so when that got away from us, then I felt like for the first time, really all year, we kind of lost our mojo a little bit. All right? Um, but credit to the staff and credit to our kids, we came back and finished the game. You know, that could have got really ugly. I mean, it was 49, right? It was 49-14 at some point, and we were able to hang in there where it didn't get any worse. Okay? And it's 52. Um, but I thought our kids lost their way a little bit, and then some things compounded. You know, we drop a kickoff return. You know, we block a punt protection wrong, and 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 then it got up. And so um, we've got to do it. We're going to do some things different in practice this week, as far as coming out after halftime. You know, because things are so cyclical. If you go back, and we went, I think, from NC State to Kansas, we were bang bang. We scored the first drive out of half, and really controlled the third quarter. In both those contests, and in the last three weeks, some of us who were playing, some of it's some mistakes that we're making. I think it's a combination of both, but we haven't played very well. And, and you can't just sit back and assume it's going to change. you got to do something about it. From a program development perspective, mm -hmm. you look at Baylor, what Matt's done there from Temple yeah. on. I think that's unique. I mean, it's, that's a unique situation. He's done, he, right. he's done a phenomenal job. Do you see, what are some of the things that you like about how they built the program? And obviously, they're here and you're down here getting to that point. Well, the thing about Matt, and, and I'm just getting to know him a little bit, so I'm just watching him from afar. I don't, we don't have a close relationship, um, is he has not blinked. Like, he had a plan. I think it's, I think it speaks to him because he really had a couple opportunities at, at a couple different Power Five jobs leaving Temple. Um, and he chose that Baylor situation. Um, so I think he went in there with a vision for what he wanted. Um, he didn't blink. He never lost his way, you know, through the one and eleven season. I mean, they grinded out seven and six last year, and now if you look at their roster, you know, I think they start eight sen eight seniors on defense, maybe um, a couple juniors, and then five seniors and three juniors on offense. And so now those two those two years have really hardened those kids, and they got some fight. And we'll talk more about Baylor because I know several of those kids on that team, um, but that's the thing. He didn't blink. Had a plan, attacked the plan, nothing swayed him off that plan, and so that's probably as good a compliment as I give him. Played so a lot of freshmen like you're doing now. He did. He did. He played a lot of freshmen in year one, and, and those guys are highly productive players right now. You know, Charlie Brewer, the receivers, on and on. Some things 